are watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Why don't you lift your hands to the Father and just give him praise. Give him praise. Welcome to levels of glory. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let the river of the Spirit flow through you. Let the river of the Spirit flow through you. Let the Holy Ghost flow. Let it flow. Let the glory flow. Let the glory flow. Hallelujah, Jesus. Give him praise. Wave your hands to him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Because I see the snare is broken. The snare, the trap, the enemy set for you, set for your child. That snare is broken this day in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That doctor's report is being turned off. It's being ripped apart, that doctor's report. Who will believe the report of the Lord? Hallelujah. Isaiah 53 verse 1 says, Who has believed the, uh, the report of the Lord? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? It's revealed to your son. It's revealed to your daughter. Lord, I thank you for faith rising in their heart. Thank you as faith rises in their heart. They shrug off the symptoms. They shrug off the sickness. They shrug off the illness. They shrug off the diseases. In Jesus' glorious name. Hallelujah. There will be enough, says the Lord. I hear the Lord say to somebody, there will be enough because he that gathered little had nothing, had no lack and he that gathered much had nothing left over. Lord, I thank you for touching the finances of your sons and your daughters in the name of Jesus. Bless their finances, Father, and I thank you for making their spirit, soul, body whole to your glory and praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't you just love the Lord? Hallelujah. His presence is so rich. His presence is so rich. Jesus will love you. We love you. Psalm 16. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. The Lord is invading your home right now. He's invading your office right now. He's invading your car right now. He's invading your space as you're walking right now. Wherever you are, wherever you are, the Holy Ghost is invading your space with the glory of God. The glory of God is that unmistakable, unmistakable grandeur, that sense of power, that sense of his grace, his presence, that's that which permeates heaven, permeating round about you, bringing healing, bringing joy, bringing love, bringing peace, causing it to be a resurgence of hope in your spirit to the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Just enjoy his presence. Enjoy his presence. Enjoy his presence. When his presence comes, your mind becomes sound. When his presence comes, worry goes away. When his presence comes, ingenuity, creativity clicks into your mind and to your spirit. When his presence comes, you know what to do. When his presence comes, things are not so bad after all. When his presence comes, he gives you the divine perspective. When his presence comes, hope fills your heart. Faith fills your heart. Love fills your heart. Forgiveness fills your heart in his presence. In his presence. Just continue to enjoy his presence. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. We marinate in your presence, oh Jesus. Hallelujah. While we're enjoying his presence, why don't you just enjoy the friend, invite a friend to join us on our broadcast today? Keep enjoying his presence. Just send out a message, send out a message, send out a message. See, it's going to be good today. The glory of God is moving. <laughs> You know, Genesis 1, 1 says the earth was dark and the earth was void. And then the presence of the Holy Ghost, the presence of the Lord moved on the face of the waters. <laughs> ah, just invite a friend and enjoy his presence. His presence is moving in your life. His presence is moving in every circumstance. His presence is moving. Those things which were hard, those hard decisions, those hard things that in your life, the Holy Spirit and His presence just bringing soft, He's just softening them. He's bringing softness. He's bringing softness. Lord, I speak softness. I speak your softness. Lord, like salt is dissolved in water, Lord. Every difficult situation, every ho sense of hopelessness, every sense of despair that any of your children may be experiencing. Father, even if they're not your children yet, Lord, they're about to become your children. Lord, I speak peace. 
I speak dissolution. The glory of God brings peace. The glory of God, God brings harmony in the name of Jesus. I speak into that uh, that there's somebody here had a terrible row, had a terrible argument. The Lord says, I, the Lord said he's resolving it. Lord, I speak peace. I speak love. I speak reconciliation to the glory of your name, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Hallelujah. 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 I do have something to share and to teach today, but just let's just enjoy his presence. If his presence is here, hey, that's, that's more than anything I could teach. That's more than anything I could impart. Just the sense of his holy presence, his holy presence, his holy presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your goodness and your power. Thank you for your release. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise in Jesus' name. I give you praise. Father, thank you as I share your word with your people today. Thank you for hope. Thank you again for faith. Thank you again for knowledge, for wisdom, for revelation in Jesus' name. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, go on, pray it out loud. Say, Father God, that's better. Father God, yeah, I ask today that you would grant to me a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, the eyes of my heart being flooded with light, being enlightened, that I would know more than I've ever known before the hope of my calling, the riches of your glory, the immeasurable greatness of your power in I who believe in Jesus' name. Just buttress that prayer by praying in the Holy Ghost for 10 seconds. Rebaka kaba sibra kaka botanta rabatita rabazita. Rebaka rama zibla bakara bajibla bakara bazanda. Libra kaka bajibla kaka bazata. Receive it. Receive revelation. Receive revelation in Jesus' name. Uh, as I begin to teach and begin to share on what the Lord's laid on my heart today on this series of levels of glory, expect divine revelation to come your way. Expect divine revelation to come your way. It's a thought. It's an idea that suddenly just pops into your soul. It pops into your heart, your mind. Boom! Just get ready for that in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, my name is uh, Seven Robin. It's a joy to be with you. Thank you for the honor of letting me come into your home or your car or wherever you're listening to this broadcast from. And I'm, pre I'm, I'm preaching on this series of teachings called Levels of Glory. Say with me, Levels of Glory. Levels of Glory. You see, th th there are levels of glory. You see, before we came to Christ, we were dead. Ephesians 2.1 says we were dead in our sins and our trespasses. We were cut off from God. We were alienated from the promises of God. You know, Hebrews chapter 2 says he called us out of our sin. He called us out of darkness, wanting to bring many sons to glory. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says that we were, we've all sinned and fallen short. When you sin, you fall short of the glory of God. You short, fall short of the beauty of the grandeur. Adam and Eve were the most f majestic, phenomenal beings God had ever created. They were phenomenal. They lived, they were, they were designed to live forever. So even when they sinned, they only lived about, they lived to, you know, like 900 years. But the glory of God was upon them. When, when sin comes, whenever sin comes, whenever you take the path route of, the route of sin, rather than the path route of sacrifice and the path route and the, the route of following God, you allow the glory of God to diminish in your life. So right now, if you know that there's sin in your life, why don't you just pray with me? Just, just, just say, Father God, I ask right now, that you would forgive me wherever there is sin, wherever there is disobedience, wherever there is delayed obedience. Forgive me and cleanse me by your precious blood. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Just pray in the Holy Ghost, five seconds. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I give you praise in Jesus' wonderful name. So today, I, I want to talk about the way that the glory of God is coming in, about how it will affect many people's lives and destinies, the impact of the glory on people's lives and destiny, and how to prepare, preparing to handle the latter, the, the, latter, the latter glory. You see, 2023 is a year of unprecedented glory, the glory of God increasing and increasing, and over several years, it was going to keep increasing. But how do you protect yourself in the glory? You, you, you say to me, what, what, what do you mean protect myself? You see, when the glory of God comes... The, 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 the error, the room for error is, is very, is very, becomes even narrower. So with Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5, they gave 50%, but the margin of error was so small that it cost them their lives. 
and it's going to cost many people lives, not only on earth, but they will face eternal judgment if they don't know how to prepare for the glory. So I'm going to be teaching us today in the short time that we have left on preparing for the glory. Now, um, turn with me to um, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, um, Jesus says something very, um, very, very harsh here, you know. Verse, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven, he who perfects the will. So it's not everybody that says, Jesus, 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 that will enter. He says, but to those who know and do and perfect my will. They walk in the narrow confines that I've given them. Many will say to me, saying, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Have we not cast out demons? Have we not seen and done many wonders? And I'll declare to them, I never knew you. Whoa, this is a tough passage. This is a tough passage. But I want to share with us today on how you can prepare yourself for the unprecedented levels of glory. And then as time permits, we'll, we'll, we'll go into a time of prayer to get together. Now, we're all familiar that there are three main areas that those who are called to the ministry, and um, th this isn't just for those who have a platform, but if you're doing anything, if you're serving the Lord, then you're called to ministry, all right? So you're called to ministry. There are three areas that predominantly we normally teach on, which are areas which uh, cause men and women of God to stumble. One is uh, pride. So if you don't learn how to humble yourself, so I often say to people that with every new victory, you need to take on a greater level of humility. You need to renew your mantle. You see, the humility is like a mantle. It covers the, the shining armor. It covers the, the, the gold. It covers the, the, the stainless steel sword. It covers the, 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 the mighty helmet that you're carrying. When you put on all the armor of God, the, the, belt of, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, when you put all those on, you also put on, clothe yourself with humility, Paul would say. So you put on humility. So that humility is like a garment, it's like a cloak. You put it on yourself and you cover, it, it, it like dims the, 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 the brightness, it dims the shining, it dims the lust of, uh, of, of, of the, the, the shine of your armor and it keeps you humble. But what we often forget is when you have a new victory, so when you've now slain your Goliath, when you've got up to a new level, you need to be careful that that doesn't cause the shine on your armor to be exposed. So you ask God for another level of humility. How do you do this practically? Practically what you do is for every new victory, uh, it could be in the office, it could be in business, it could be wherever. Anytime that God gives you a victory, you kneel before the Lord and you say, Lord, I consecrate this victory to you. I give this victory to you. I offer it to you in, on your knees. And then you, as you offer, as you give him the victory, you then ask for him the new garment. You receive from him the new garment of humility. So you say, Lord, I thank you for the victory of what you've done in my life, the financial breakthrough, the healing breakthrough. I thank you for the way that you use me, oh God, and I dedicate it to you. And I receive from you a new mantle and a new cloak of humility to take me on the next level of my journey. Okay? So that helps you to deal with pride. Hey, <sighs> You know, God often will use people around you to warn you if you are being prideful. So pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, I ask today that you would help me to identify those in my circle of friends, those in my sphere of influence that you have sent to me to keep me humble. In Jesus' name. Just pray that. Pray that. Just um Buttress that prayer, pray in the Holy Ghost a few seconds. Libra kare mokaya majibra kaka majita. La majika 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 majita. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. You need to have people around you in your sphere of influence that are voices that keep you humble, that keep you from being proud. Because when you have pride, God says he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So if you walk in pride, he himself will resist you. You know, I read this wonderful book by a guy called Rick, by Rick Joyner, famous prophet, um, The Final Quest. Read it if you haven't. And in this book, he saw how one of the things that he saw played out was how there was a whole battalion of Christian soldiers. They had forgotten to put on the garment of humility, and they were advancing in pride. When they advanced in pride, the enemy got his arrows and began to shoot them from behind. Why? Because the armor of God only cover, covers and protects the front. There's no shield. There's, there's nothing for the back. What protects your back is walking in humility with the Lord. God bless you as you walk in humility.
So that's one of the areas where ministers fall. And like I said, if you're giving your heart to Jesus, you're serving God in any capacity, you're his minister. The second area is sexual sin and sexual compromise. So the, the scriptures are very clear here. When you sin against your body, you sin against the Holy Spirit. So you need to ask God to cause his fear to come upon you. I remember God doing this for me you know, as, a, as a teenager. And um, I'd, uh, I'd been pleasuring myself, you know, as, as a teenager, as, as teenagers often, often do. And I suddenly woke up about 2, 3 a.m. in the morning, and there was a sense of a spirit being being in the room. And the spirit being twiggled my toe. And the fear of God jumped through me. And I knew, and I heard in my spirit, I, I somehow knew in my spirit, this was a tormenting angel. The tormenting angel was sent there to warn me, don't defile your body, even by pleasuring yourself. Don't defile your body. You need to walk holy. You need to walk pure. So the solution for me, the greatest solution against sexual temptation and all that, apart from, you know, love of a spouse or, or that, the greatest, uh, the greatest the, the greatest solution is the fear of God. So, you know, just pray this prayer with me. Just pray. It's a dangerous prayer, but pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, cause me to fear you when it comes to sexual purity. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Buttress that prayer. Rake kare kata ba ke kaba jeta. Le broko ba ke ama je brako na ama zible be yete bo zende. In Jesus' name, Lord, I release your fear upon your sons and your daughters. In Jesus' name, keep them in purity, keep them in holiness. I pray to your glory, to your glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name. So the third area, and these are the three areas that we know about, and. Um, Hopefully, we'll, we'll get to the other two, which I really want to talk about. But if not, um, we'll, we'll continue in the broadcast, um, you know, coming Monday. The third area is money. The thing about money is motivation. So a bricklayer can work for certain hours, and he's working, he's doing the, the bricklaying because he's got his pay, the paycheck is the uppermost thing in his mind. That's why he's doing the bricklaying. That's why not everybody loves their job to that degree, but they go, that you know, you, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a, a carpenter, whether you're a bus driver, the motivation isn't, oh, I want to be a love, <laughs> well, you know, for some it may be, but it's not usually for bus drivers. Oh, I want to be the most cheerful bus driver and make everybody happy. Come on, where are you off to? I want to really be make everybody happy. That's not usually the greatest motivation of the bus driver. What makes the bus driver want to get out to work is he's thinking of the four or 500 pounds he's going to get, or how much he gets paid at the end of the, of, of, of the week. And so for most professions, the motivation is money. You want to pay the bills. But when it comes to ministry, God doesn't allow that. No, the motivation of the man of woman of God must be the love of God, the call of God, the revelation of God. So we're doing it because God has called us to do this. God has called us to do this. And very often there's a error that creeps in when the man of God or the woman of God begins to think of money when money becomes the number one priority. So for instance, you've got a choice to go and minister here or you've got a choice to go and minister there and you're thinking, which will pay me better? Ouch, I'm guilty also, it's a difficult one. But God needs to keep, help us to keep our lives free and clear from the love of money. I see as I'm talking also that there's somebody who's calling to God has been on hold because of your love for money. Your love for money, you're getting paid. There's somebody that, that's watching right now you're getting paid um, in, a, in a certain job, and because of the paycheck that comes, the call of God has been on hold. And the Lord says, I should break that with you in Jesus' name. You want to break that? You need to break that because destiny, you're losing, as you're losing weeks, months, years by disobeying God, destiny, not just of you, but the destiny of your children and your family is being, is being held. You know, there's a very scary scripture. Not many people like me saying this. It's a very scary scripture. It's Hosea chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Hosea 4, 6 and 7 says this, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being my priests. And because you've not followed my law, I also will forget your children. When you take a wrong turn or you disobey the Lord when it comes to ministry, it's not just affecting you, it's not just affecting the lives of those that you are meant to minister to, but it's also affecting the covering over your children. It's affecting the covering over your children. When we walk in obedience with God and we do things right with God, there's a spiritual atmosphere that comes, exudes from us, and a spiritual covering that comes over our natural children as well as our spiritual children. And that's one of the reasons why you, you know, coming back to this person who's been delaying the call of God, 
you cannot continue to delay the call of God because it's not about you. It's about the destiny of those who you are to reach, but also the destinies of your children, natural and spiritual. So just pray this prayer with me. Just come, come in repentance with me and just say, Father God, thank you for today. This message of repentance and this message about the calling. I repent today of my delay in obeying you and I thank you for wisdom now on the timing to limit the amount of hours that I work in this particular job. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray grace for your son, for your daughter. In Jesus' name. Just put trust that prayer, pray in the Holy Ghost for five seconds. Be free. Be free in Jesus' wonderful, precious name. So those are three areas that often cause men to fall short of the glory of God, even in ministry. And I believe that when you fall short in one of those areas, you are in danger of the Matthew 7, 22 passage that we just read. But I want to build on that by sharing on two other areas, which we don't often hear a lot of, uh, we, we don't often hear spoken of, about a lot. And um, I, 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 I'll, see, I'll see how we do for time. But one of them is prophetic misdirection. So uh, a man of God, a woman of God, a brother or a sister, they may be living in holiness, they may be living and walking in humility, they may not have uh, the love of money, may not be a particular problem or issue with them, and the enemy will sometimes try to get them through prophetic misdirection, prophetic misdirection. Now, let, let, me, let me say this. Prophetic People are more in danger of prophetic misdirection in an atmosphere that doesn't have much of the prophetic rather than an atmosphere that has loads of the prophetic. Now, that, that's, that seems the wrong way around. It's not the abundance of the prophetic that causes there to be a time of danger. It's when there's hardly any prophetic that a prophetic comes and you're not able to weigh it, you're not able to discern it. It's because the atmosphere hasn't been filled and saturated with the prophetic. Now, let, let me just say, let me, let, let, let me say this, you know, to people who lead fellowships or who lead ministries. You must teach your people about the prophetic gifts, starting with teaching them how to weigh the prophetic, how to judge. The, the prophetic is like, a, is like a loaded gun. And if you don't teach people how to use it, how to weigh it, how not to use it, how to judge it, how to discern it, then you, lay, you leave your people open to somebody coming in and through lack of wisdom, lack of insight, lack of understanding, being them, them firing off a prophetic gun and causing it to be misdirection, not only in, in the lives of your people, but potentially also in you. Prophetic misdirection. Now, you need to understand to weigh prophecy. And, uh, oh, oh let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just interrupt what I'm saying here. So um, I, I brought a free, um, for a love offering of any amount, uh, our book for the day is uh, 70, I, I actually hadn't linked it to what I was preaching until just now. So it's called 70 Truths About the Gift of Prophecy. 70 Truths, how to prophesy, how to weigh prophecy and all that. But um, just send in your love offering, any amount, one pound, 10 pounds, 100 pounds, 1,000 pounds if you want. Send in any love offering. Send your postal address. Our, our details are down there on the screen. Send in your postal address and we'll get a copy of this off to you. So I'm talking about prophetic misdirection. You know, I, I remember, again, uh, drawing from experience, I was in my early 20s or there, and um, I'd spent the night with these two brothers in, uh, for those of you, you know, it was in, in, a, in a university campus in Nigeria, and um, we were just praying together, and one of them began to prophesy, and he began to mention the name of a particular sister. Now, don't laugh. This isn't funny, <laughs> you know. He began to mention the name of a particular sister in the fellowship and saying that I should... In, 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 in so many words, that I should enter into a relationship with her. Now, I didn't fancy this sister, you know, not, not in that way. She was, just a, she was just a general, you know, sister. You know, I, didn't, I didn't fancy her in that way. But I thought that I would be, be disobedient if I didn't follow through that prophetic word. And you know what happened? I did. My zeal for God went from up here, down here. The fire of God went from up here and down here. And I entered a season of about one and a half, two years of prophetic wilderness until I realized that, oh, well, what happened was this sister, you know, even actually left me and backslid and went and was with somebody else and was actually committing adultery, you know, fornication with the other person. And then some friends came around to me and they said to me, Robin, you need to stop this nonsense. Excuse me. You need to stop this nonsense. That person is not that person is not for you, you know. And that's how God set me free, and that's how God broke me free. So, Father God, wherever there's been prophetic misdirection in the lives of your sons and your daughters, 
Be free in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. So one of the great things about, one of the great ways to prevent prophetic misdirection is by praying with others and by knowledge and understanding and insight. Understanding that a revelation has basically four complements. There's the revelatory bit, there's the bit of interpretation, there's how you apply it, and then it's how it's delivered. And each stage, you need to have an understanding of what goes on in each stage so that you can either welcome the prophetic word, put the prophetic word on a shelf and just say, look, I'll just leave that for now and pray into that. Or the third thing that you can do is just reject it and say, thank you very much, but that prophetic word isn't for me. But I, 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 see, I see somebody that is being called to, have, to, 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 to lead a big movement. You're called to lead a movement and God is sending me to you and warning you, beware prophetic misdirection, beware prophetic misdirection. You know, our, our time is far spent. I want to encourage you, you know, get in touch. Um, get in touch. You, my email address is up there. Our WhatsApp number is up there. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, there's loads of ways that you can get in touch so that we can continue to interact. And I promise you, I'll talk more about prophetic misdirection when we meet next Monday. And then I'll also share the fifth area of, um, of, of failure where we need to watch out. You see, while, while we're doing all this is because the glory of God is going to increase and increase and increase. And we need to be careful how to swim and know how to swim in the glory of God. So once again, um, thank you so much for your time today. Look for the rest of our books on Amazon. Um, if you're called to the prophetic and apostolic or leadership and you're looking for mentoring, we do have a mentoring academy. Um, the last time that you'll be able to get in is, um, is, is third week in February. Uh, we have different programs that go on all the time. Um, do, do, do send in your contact details, do sign up and we'll We'll, um, we'll, we'll keep you in touch. Oh, and if you've got an offering to bring, Lord, I thank you. Bless those who give their offerings today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Faith World TV.